the bridge, so... I got in a fight once in my life. Um, I've been attacked once or twice, but I've only ever been in one real fight. Um, it was in eighth grade, it was the last day of eighth grade, and this kid was so bad. I mean, just like, he was a, such a bad dude. <laughs> uh, I, well, the, he, he, you know, just had bad relationships and was just in a bad, like, life pattern, you know, his whole life growing up. But just from day one, he was, he was there to just be a troublemaker and, like, talk shit, get in fights, you know. He ended up, like, in and out of jail for years. I think he's... He's probably back in jail now for like a really long time, maybe. At this point, I don't know. But, uh, you know, he's just one of those people. Like, uh, he was the worst kid in school, for sure. And, uh, you know, I'm not gonna send this video to him, obviously, because I don't want to, like, have, be become a target or something. But, I just want to say, like, I'm not... I I, I feel bad, because I made fun of him. Like, he, he, he uh... They, he was in so much like trouble all the time that they had to put him in a group of uh, kids like they had pods in each uh, in our in my class right in middle school like there was say 400 kids in in the class uh, the whole class you know and there were pods of about a hundred kids and then there was another pod that was like a smaller group of kids that were like you know special like they had like issues at home or like issues with like drugs violence etc you know you know or just couldn't associate with people for whatever reason like who knows and just you know how kids are like we bully each other and we don't fucking think and so this one time like he was walking in a group of kids like he hung out with like some of the football players and stuff like the ones who never turned out to really be athletes you know the ones who ended up getting more into the drugs and you know they're he would hang out with kids that like no offense those those football players ended up just being more in it for the ego you know and not, nothing against them like people mature and grow up and stuff and we all like I, I was a dickwad too so yeah he's walking by in this group of kids and uh, I just go hi Ryan <laughs> like talking to him like he was like a special needs kid you know and uh, from that day forward like the next two years I was just like this kid's target like he, he was you know he wanted to fucking get me and I was like you know I, I wanted to like you know show him what's up and stuff but really I just wanted to avoid a fight and by the end I eventually I was just like leave me alone and, you know he's still like he's got a reason to t attack me so He's just, he was just after me, you know, and he was like my personal bully, you know, or just tormentor or whatever. And, it, you know, it kind of got to me, but it was brought on for a good reason. And uh, now just looking back, like, I, I was such an asshole, man. Just, like, didn't fucking think about, like, why people are the way they are. Just had no fucking compassion. I thought I was so cool because I was, like, a nice guy. And being a nice guy, like, just turn it, it makes you into a people pleaser, and it just makes... Uh, it, it you end up just letting people like turn you into somebody that you're not and guaranteed if you're trying to be somebody that you're not you, you're gonna be a fucking whack job dude you're gonna be an asshole or you know just like a shithead I wish I had a selfie stick man holding my arm up is getting annoying um and, and uh, yeah, so this isn't like an apology video. Like I still, you know, you're robbing people. What the fuck, man? Like, come on. Yeah, or like just going out. Yeah, just not caring about other people. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because I've been thinking about my own like daddy issues lately. And I think, you know, my dad was a fantastic pr parent, but nobody is without their flaws. And um, I, I think actually like the more I think about it, the more not like him I am but yeah I mean I'm becoming like him and just in the way that I like don't beat around the bush and I like tell people what's up and I like maybe I come off as a little um like it's hard to explain a whole concept at once when you're trying to just get it through people's heads and get them to take action you know and it's like 
it's a simple concept, but it connects to all this other stuff. And, and uh, you know, this is how my dad was. He's like, he'd tell me, like, he, a lot of life lessons that just wouldn't get through to me. And I'm just thinking, so if I'm, like, so much like my dad, who I really, uh, you kind of uh, more often think how I have nothing in common with him, and yet he and I really have, like, the same fucking personality. I wonder what this kid's dad is like. And I bet if you asked him, how, you know, how many times did you beat your son? His dad would say, yeah, I, I feel bad for you guys. You just got this shitty view of a tree, and I'm like near all this beautiful water. Uh, you ask him, how many times did he beat your son? And his dad would say, not once. You know, I'm sure of that. Like, it's just, you know, we lived in this town that's like kind of the nicest town to live in uh, in the whole area. Like, I mean, there, there's, you could say that there, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of fucking nice towns around where I live. Like, we, Seacoast fucking New Hampshire, man. It's like one of the finest places to live on the planet. But, you know, you just wouldn't think that, like, this kind of, like, domestic violence shit would go down. But, come on, man. Come on. There's no chance that this guy's dad, like... Like, I'm not trying to insult the guy. Like, uh, especially, like, if you're watching this dude, like... I'm just like trying to come to a better understanding and like share share this with people so um, you know we don't just like judge a book by its cover, essentially. Um, yeah, I mean that pretty much sums it up. Like the 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 fucking yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I got shit to do tonight. Gotta get to bed early. So um, yeah, just like look at people um, at. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you another story along the same lines in the future about the time I got attacked. But uh, the, the moral of the story is, like, first of all, don't be an asshole to people because you don't know what's going to happen. But second, like, just try to understand, like, what might be the reason for, for uh, people's negative traits. <laughs> uh, just... Yeah, think think before you're an asshole to somebody, and uh, to to stay out of bullshit and like crime, and to stay out, you know, to avoid like the temptation to just like torment people or the temptation to get into drugs and a, just a shitty like party lifestyle and stuff. You gotta have a life of purpose. And that's really fucking hard in this world. You're like, oh, I want to save the world, you know. Like, that's not gonna, you know, you know it, that's, that's a really fucking lofty goal. And, um, like, absolutely, that's what we should all strive for. But, you know, most people can't eat, like, organic fruits and vegetables all the time. Most people, like, can't even afford to, eat, like, support their local fucking farmers, dude. It's insane. The system is so fucked. So, like, that, uh, here's my suggestion. Do I need to say it? I'm not gonna say it. It's fucking obvious, dude. It's fucking obvious. Because you, you, you feel healthier, you're able to do more to contribute to the cause of whatever it may be, saving the world. Live a life of purpose, man. And uh, do something good like in your daily life. So you're like, oh, it's not gonna save the world. It won't be good for my health long term. Uh, you know... I think it's gonna cost me too much more stuff like that it and what the fuck <laughs> it's so uh, beneficial it, it transforms your whole consciousness I remember when I first started going vegan I, I, I didn't even like <clears throat> go vegan like I when I first figured it out like oh you can eat like fruits and vegetables and be healthy that's so fucking sustainable uh, when I figured it out like I didn't even want to tell anybody because I, I had too much like ego shit going on so I actually kept it a secret for a while before uh, you know eventually I started talking about it um, but that was like after a few months solid um, of just learning about it you know and I still ask questions to this day you should always question everything um, but you'll find the truth, man. Like, if, when you start questioning things, you'll it will lead you to veganism because it's just correct, man. Um, 
I know there's just some people that like that's not gonna fit your lifestyle but hey if you're one of the 99 fucking percent man it's it's the way to go um, yeah it, better for the health better for the planet it's better for society and just ethics in general and really like it's a spiritual thing because you just don't kill animals man and uh, that's you know it's it's just a nice thing so yeah, it, it's really kind of nice to know that, like, hey, I'm not, like, like, fucking, you know, cut, cutting that fucking cow's head off, dude. Like, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. And if you're eating dairy, like, don't even talk to me, man. I don't want to be your friend if you eat dairy. Like, I'd rather not associate with you if you're consuming fucking dairy products. Like, you know, people are like, oh, come out for drinks one time, and they're trying to be nice. Like, I appreciate that, but I don't want to fucking hang around you if you're consuming cow titty juice man okay we're sorry but uh, w with all due respect fuck off until you get off the fucking dairy and uh like get some fucking common sense think critically and don't support factory farming i it, as a matter of fact if you are a supporter of animal factory farming we can't be friends i'm sorry no offense but that like you can't get a sack of rice and beans at Walmart, like, once a week. Really? Really. You know, and people, oh, we need to have more compassion than that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we do. Like, we need to <laughs> help people get their rice and beans. You can live on rice, beans, and broccoli, okay? And if you got food stamps, I, I, I just don't understand. Like, the poorest people on the planet have to be vegan. Like, the most destitute fucking, like, you know... A dollar a day, 50 cents a day. Those, you think those people are consuming animal products? You are incorrect. Uh, hunter gatherers are not poor. That's a different story, okay? But we're, you know, 99.999% of us are not going to start that. So I'll, I'll stop the rant here. Beautiful day. Um, and I'll see you when I get home to tear apart that Mark Hyman guy. <laughs> Pop that Hyman. I'm gonna Pop him. All right, so let's check out uh, Mark Hyman's book, The Blood Sugar Solution. This guy, he's not a bad person, man. And I don't think, you know, even he's necessarily like a bad doctor. But I think he's out there just to be a people pleaser. Because he doesn't, you know, cut sugar cravings, you know, eliminate the leading, leading causes of heart disease. But he's not a vegan, so... You know, pretty hard to say that you can eliminate the leading causes of heart disease if you're eating animal products, which are the leading, you know, the leading causes of heart disease, as well as cancer and probably obesity as well. In fact, yeah, uh, more meat equals more obesity. So yeah, and reverse prediabetes and oh, okay, well, this guy, Neil Bernard, this is a little, you can see he's a fair bit leaner than uh. Dr. Hyman, you know, no, no disrespect to the guy. I think he looks great. But Neil Bernard, look at this guy. So you're, the leaner you are, the less risk you have for diabetes. Now, this, this is one lean cat. There's an, another guy, you know, pretty lean. Plant-based doctor there, Dr. Gregor. Nutritionfacts.org, awesome website. Um, and this guy wrote... Um, this book here, the scientifically proven system for reversing diabetes without drugs, Neil Bernard, uh, you know, so this guy, founder of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, he's, he's an activist, man, he gets out there, he's, he's sued like McDonald's and he's sued like, you know, big food. Drag them into court for breaking the law. You know, so he's out there doing really the good work. And Mark Hyman, he's out there writing shit like eat fat to lose fat. You know, and just the blood sugar solution. I I don't know, man. I'm not gonna buy the book, I'm not gonna critique it, but I just if you if you're gonna pick one, I would go with the scientifically proven system. Um yeah, maybe I'll I'll put on a little clip of uh Neil Bernard, and then I'll uh, head out for the night. Oh, by the way, got a second uh, 
serving a rice here. I can't believe I'm going to eat it. I'm, I'm already stuffed, but my brain's hungry, so I'm going to keep going. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Completely different. Instead of limiting breads and all of these kinds of things, what if, if fat is the issue, what if we have a diet that has effectively no fat in it? Well, where does fat come from? It comes from two sources, animal products, animal fat, and vegetable oils. So we brought in 99 people, and we asked them to do two things. To really eat a bounty of food, not worrying about quantity. We're not counting calories here. We are not counting carb grams or anything like that. What we're doing instead is we're setting the animal product aside, keeping the vegetable oils low. Very simple. Now, one of our participants was a man named Vance. And Vance's father was dead by age 30. Vance was 31 when he was diagnosed with diabetes. He was in his late 30s when he came to see us. And he said, this is not hard. Unlike every other diet he'd been on, we didn't care how many carbs he ate or how many calories or how many portions. If he was having chili, not a meat chili, it would be a bean chili, chunky vegetable chili. If he was having spaghetti, instead of a meat topping, it would be topped with artichoke hearts and wild mushrooms and chunky tomato sauce and that kind of thing, very, very easy. Over a course of about a year, he lost 60 pounds. His blood sugar came down and down and down. And one day his doctor sat him down and said, Vance, I know you've had family members die of this disease, but as I look at your blood tests, you don't have it anymore. 